Welcome to Keep Rolling and today I'm going to be teaching you an easy step-by-step -step approach to learning the soul grind. But first, let's play the intro. You're watching Keep Rolling and today I'm teaching the soul grind. In terms of the structure of this video, I'm first going to discuss the prerequisite skills before you learn to grind. I'm then going to go through um, some brief safety information and how to choose the right obstacle to learn to grind. I'm then going to talk about the foot positioning for the sole grind, how to step on grind, how to jump on grind, and then some sole trick variations too. So in terms of the prerequisite skills that you'll need before you learn to grind, you need to have mastered the basics of inline skating um, to ensure that you've got a safe, stable base to be able to move forwards into grinding. So I'd advise that you're comfortable rolling forwards, skating backwards, using the T-stop manoeuvre to control your speed and stop, and also being able to jump on inline skates. So just some very brief safety information before we dive into the tutorial. And that is that I fully recommend the use of full protective gear. Inline skating can be dangerous, and when you're moving into aggressive skating and learning to grind, you should definitely expect to fall over and hurt yourself at some stage. Hopefully, though, that injury will just be minor, but wearing protective gear, such as a helmet, wrist guards, knee pads, elbow pads, and even hip protection, can just help to mitigate that risk of injury. I'll leave links to products that I recommend in the description below if you are looking to get some protective gear. So when you're choosing an obstacle to learn to grind on, um, something like a coping box in a wooden skate park is absolutely ideal. I'd recommend something probably between ankle uh, to mid calf height at first as it's just easier to jump on but if you are a bit taller you may want to choose a slightly um, higher obstacle and that is when you inevitably miss your back foot at some stage it will just mean that you're less likely to trip up on the obstacle and if it's a bit closer to you then you've got something to hold on to but if you don't have a wooden indoor skate park as I don't at the moment um, during the lockdown in the UK then a um, metal angle iron ledge in an outdoor skate park works just as well and if you don't have either of those things then find a ledge or a curb in the street somewhere apply some wax if you need to and that will work well too in terms of the foot positioning for the sole grind i'm going to refer to your feet as dominant and non-dominant so if you're right-footed then your dominant foot is your right-footed and vice versa if uh, you prefer the left if you're not sure which is your dominant foot, then just imagine uh, yourself kicking a football and the foot that you choose is likely to be uh, your dominant one. But if you're not sure, just do whatever feels natural to you. It may take a little bit of trial and error to find what feels comfortable. So to get into the sole grind position to begin with, we're first going to stand parallel to the obstacle and adopt a stable base position. That is feet shoulder width apart, knees bent, and leaning slightly forwards to ensure we maintain a stable position. We're gonna now place the majority of our weight, or all of our weight even, onto our non-dominant leg, and we're gonna lift our dominant leg up towards the obstacle and place the sole plate onto the coping or the edge of the ledge. Once we've got our sole plate comfortably locked in, we're just gonna tilt our ankle um, over slightly um, to maintain a stable sort of central gravity um, when we do come into the full sole grind position. So once we're comfortable with the lock, we're leaning our ankle over, we're then going to apply our full weight onto the dominant foot. As we do this, we're then going to bring the non-dominant leg in front of us and we're going to lock in the H block. Weight distribution should be about 80% on the sole foot or dominant leg and about 20% on the front foot, the non-dominant leg. So keep practicing this seal, going from just standing parallel to the obstacle, locking in the sole foot, and then bringing up the uh, H-block foot in front of us until you feel comfortable in the stance. Now, once you're comfortable stepping on to a stall position in the sole grind, we're ready to start grinding. So in order to do the step on grind, which is the first step, we're gonna skate parallel to the obstacle at a slow to moderate speed at first. We're going to adopt that stable base position and as we come close to the obstacle we are going to apply full pressure onto the non-dominant leg, lift our sole foot into position 
and maintaining the weight on the non-dominant leg, we're just gonna allow the sole play just to gently uh, slide across the surface just to get used to the sensation of that friction under the foot. We're then gonna just keep repeating this process until we feel comfortable and gradually just increase the amount of weight onto the sole foot and just to get used to that friction. And you may need to apply a little bit of wax or just go a little bit faster if you do find that you are sticking as you increase, increase the amount of weight on the sole foot. Once you feel comfortable transferring the majority of weight onto the non-dominant leg and the sole plate is sliding comfortably, we're then going to place our full weight onto the sole plate and then we're gonna lift our non-dominant foot into position and lock in the H block. We're gonna maintain that forwards um, stable base position with our knees bent. We're gonna be leaning forwards and keeping that weight distribution about 80% at the back, 20% at the front. And we can use our arms um, to balance as we need to. And really it's just gonna be a case of repeating this process until we feel comfortable sliding along in the sole grind stance. Once you're happy with the step on grind, we're ready for the jump on grind. And before we start getting locked in, I just recommend that you're comfortable skating parallel to the obstacle and jumping um, on top of the, of the deck of the obstacle um, to make sure that you are, you are happy um, you know, jumping and engaging the core and this will make it much easier as we move forwards. So in order to do this, we're gonna repeat the approach as per the step on grind, adopting the stable base position. But this time we're going to keep our core tight, we're going to engage the core and use it to lift our legs upwards, bend our knees and jump onto the top of the obstacle. As we land, we're going to push up with our knees um, to maintain that stable centre of gravity, lean forwards and then just jump off the edge of the obstacle, again bending the knees to absorb the pressure. So we're just going to repeat this process until it feels comfortable and now we're ready to jump on grind. So, repeat the steps as per jumping on top of the obstacle, stable base, knees bent, leaning forwards, feet shoulder width, core tight. But this time, as we approach the obstacle, we're going to spot the landing for our feet um, on the, the coping or the angle iron. And we need to keep in mind at all times that we're aiming to jump up on top of the obstacle and grind the top of the obstacle not the edge of the obstacle and that's really important because it means that when we get on we'll be able to maintain our balance and hold that grind all the way to the end so we're going to spot our landing we're going to engage the core jump upwards and land with both feet simultaneously into the sore grind position be prepared to completely miss your back foot at first, and this is totally normal. But as long as we've got that stable base and we're leaning forwards, when we do miss, we should just allow that uh, sole plate or non-dominant uh, dominant leg even just to roll along the floor, remove your H block from the obstacle, roll away and try again. If you are uh, repeatedly uh, missing the ledge, then it may well be that you just need to go back, make sure you're comfortable with jumping onto it and also with the step on grind, but really, just repetition, a practice and trial and error is what's going to lead to your success at this stage. If you are finding that the, the jumping is particularly taxing, which it can be for someone who's not used to it, um, as the skates you know, are, are pretty heavy, um, try an exercise off your skates where you stand stationary on with your shoes on and jump and bring your knees to your elbows. And this will just practice, you know, engaging the core and building up the strength, which will really help with the grinding. Once you have mastered the sole grind, moving forwards, there are some sole variations which you can do with a bit more practice. So these are the acid grind, the mizu, and the forwards star or porn star. So I hope you found this tutorial uh, was valuable. Um, if you did get value from it, then I'd be grateful if you could hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, then why not hit subscribe? Also, if you do need any further help or guidance, then leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. I'm Chris Chadwick of Keep Rolling. Thanks for watching. See you next time.